Yo, it's Brock. Welcome back to the channel. I'm so glad that you're here. Today, we are talking C-Log3 and how I grade my C-Log3 footage. Now, many of you may know at the end of last year, I did launch a C-Log2 LUT pack. I'm really proud of it. I use it all the time. And a lot of you asked for a C-Log3 version. So that is officially available today as you're watching this video. Now, before we jump into all this, I do want to quickly mention the awkwardness that is a YouTuber content creator selling a product that they've created. I know it's weird, but truthfully, I believe in this stuff. I wouldn't sell it if I didn't think it was good. That's why it's taking me this long. I want to make sure that they're right. I want to make sure it's something that I would use. And honestly, every video that you've seen on my channel within the last year has been graded with my own LUT packs, whether it's C70 footage, whether it's R6 footage, it's all been my own LUTs. So this is something that I use in my process. It's how I create all of my looks. They start with these base LUTs and then I go from there. So that's what this video is about. I just kind of want to get that out of the way and take the weirdness away. So I'm not expecting you to buy anything, but if you do want to support the channel, it is a great way to do so. And I really do think they are helpful and a useful resource for you when it comes to grading your, you know, R6 footage, your R5 footage, whatever you got, any C-Log3 camera, these are for you. And also on top of the C-Log3 LUT pack dropping, I do have a finishing LUT pack that I put up as well. It's four LUTs, four different looks. These are designed to go on adjustment layers, kind of at the end of your grade. They just kind of last a little bit of sauce on top. They can kind of push you in a direction tonally um, they're really cool I like them I use them again all the time there's four of them it's 10 bucks it's super cheap and I am running 20% off on the C-Log 2 and the new C-Log 3 pack so if you go in the store you'll see that there get a little bit of a discount just in celebration of launching the C-Log 3 pack and just how well that the C-Log 2 pack has done so that's all we're gonna talk about that now let's actually jump into how I grade my footage I'm gonna go to the computer and kind of give you a step-by-step -step of how I actually use all this stuff and how it's not just about the LUTs you can't just drop and go and be done sometimes you still have to make adjustments and do some extra things to get the look that you want. Okay, so here we are at the computer and I have this C-Log3 clip from my uh, R6 Mark II sitting right here. And first things first, before you do anything, you gotta make sure the order of your layers, I'm in Final Cut right now, are correct in terms of your color processing. So first what I like to do, I like to go in and add a color wheels. Once I apply the LUT, if I need to make any exposure adjustments, you want to make sure all of those adjustments are above the LUT in terms of layer order. Or if you're in a node-based software like DaVinci, you just want to make sure that the adjustments you're making are before, so that you're making adjustments on the raw clip as opposed to the clip that has the LUT applied because then you start to lose dynamic range and things like that. So first, I add a color wheels. Then I'm going to come over here to my effects and just type in LUTs, custom LUT, drag. Okay, boom. And so let's just do, we'll start with my favorite one. Uh, we'll go to the C-Log 3 pack and we're gonna go Soft Cinema. Okay, boom. And Soft Cinema, these LUTs, again, these are conversion LUTs, so they're not gonna be overly saturated. They're not gonna be um, crazy intense, like finished product looks, but what they're designed to do is they're designed tonally to push you in a direction. They're not gonna be overly saturated. So what this allows you to do is then, now that we have this look, which it's a good looking image, it's just a little boring, a little flat. So from here, what we're able to do is we can then begin to tweak with our color wheels to get some better looks, some more stylized looks. So then what I would probably do on this one is come into the mid-tones here, bump saturation just a little bit, and pull the exposure in the mid-tones down just a, just a bit to add some contrast. And to adding contrast, a lot of times will add, bring out saturation as well. So just be conscious of that. You just wanna be sure that your, your blacks are not being crushed. And we're sitting pretty good in terms of highlights and blacks. Um, you don't just don't want your blacks to be too close to zero. Um, if they are, you know, you can kind of adjust your shadows accordingly. Um, I just don't want his hair right here to just kind of be this black blob. I kind of want it to, to, to have some life to it, so turn off scopes off for now because I'm not I'm I'm a big go with what looks good not what the scopes tell you so that's my approach whether it's right or wrong that's just kind of that's just kind of what I do so from here right you, that's a great looking image right and now that we've made these adjustments you know you can adjust the highlights accordingly however you want your image to look um, but in terms of a base image that looks great right looks great coming out of the R6 has great colors um, let's cycle through some other of the C-Log3 let's see if there's one that we like better so that's natural. You can see what Soft Cinema was doing to the greens there. It kind of warms the greens up a little bit. They're less like, uh, you know, crayon green. They're more like a little bit more of like a like a hunter green, kind of warmer. Um, natural is going to be again, as the name expresses, it's just pretty much natural colors. What your eyes would probably see. Um, looks great again if you're going for just a more of a basic image. Kodak is kind of emulating some film 
colors in terms of uh, the kind of more of a crushed black look. It's gonna it's gonna add some contrast, add some punch. Um, I love this look. I think it looks great when you kind of oversaturate it a little bit too. Um, but that looks sick. I, I love pu punchy images, so I think that's great. Um, then let's try Earth. So Earth is a kind of a more soft. Um, this would be great. Like Earth is really nice on the greens here. Um, I like Earth on the greens and skin tones. To me, Earth looks great. It's like a nice warm image. You know, if you were in like a nature setting or somewhere a little less urban, like this is not bad because we have the you know the trees in the background here. Um, but you know, it's it's a nice look. I like Earth. I like Earth and the planet too. That's also sick. <laughs> uh, let's try Duotone. Duotone's weird, man. Duotone's cool. What I love about this one though, it's a very stylized look, as you can tell. The shadows and midtones kind of get more blue, especially the shadows and the highlights. They they become cooler. A lot of a lot of blues in the, in the undertones. But what it doesn't do is it doesn't really mess with skin tones. Like you can see, his skin still looks nice and saturated, nice and warm. Doesn't really affect it too much in terms of the cool nature of everything. Like you can kind of cycle through. Like his skin. What I love about these looks, the skin tones always stay stay where they should, and I just love it. They lean in, they fit into the the, the look, but they're still um, just they just look great. So I really love this one. Um, then what we'll do, let's try, let's try clean, see what clean's talking about. So clean is kind of another similar one to natural. Um, it's a little bit more punchy than natural, which I like. So like if like a talking head situation, like I use clean a lot for stuff like this. Um, I find that it just, you know, it just gives you a nice look. Um, clean's sick. And then let's move to, let's see what's next. Cine print. So cine print is going to be more of like leaning towards the greens it's going to bring the highlights down a little bit you can always adjust with your adjust with your clip accordingly like for this one let's look at our scopes here you see the blacks are being crushed with this one so what i'll do so because so so that's this, this, these are the adjustments you have to make per lut just depending on what you're doing and again the eye test like don't don't live and die by the scopes um you can see this one because it's green heavy the reds and blues are kind of crushed anyway um, because of the tonal adjustments on this one. So you just kind of want to watch the green here. And that's what I'm kind of watching to make sure we get, we get them right. Um, and again, this is a very more of a unique look. I kind of like it for certain environments. Um, it's probably not what I would go with here, but I do, I do enjoy Cine print. And then last but not least, we have our black and white, which always, um, is just a cool look. This one in this particular clip, I'd probably bring the highlights down a bit. Um, you could bring up the mids just a bit just so it's not too crushed um, and bring the shadows just so we're not killing him. But that's just a cool man, like a cool look. Um, everybody loves it. You got to have a good black and white LUD in your arsenal. Um, so I think that looks that looks great. But for this one, to be honest, I would probably go with either Soft Cinema or Kodak. Um, Soft Cinema just is such a nice, pleasing image um, to me. But but Kodak's cool. Um, just for the the environment i think kodak looks sick that would be my grade on this clip and then what i would probably do this is the base grade is then you could come up here and grab an adjustment layer and for this one because kodak is such a heavy look already i'm going to go back to soft cinema just to demonstrate because i probably wouldn't use an adjustment layer with kodak um just because of the heavy handed nature of the lut itself so let's just go back to soft cinema right um and then for your adjustment layer, your finishing LUTs, what I would do is maybe like, let's just try see what blues does. So blues, I call this one blues baby, right? Um, with an exclamation point, like, blues baby, you know what I'm saying? Um, but what you do here is like, you can see, this is the full intensity of this finishing LUT. So you, you can play with like the mix of it here and go about, you know, this is 100%. I would probably go probably like 70%, right? for this particular look and then that's on i mean it's off on off on so you just kind of cool the whole image up and what's cool about these luts is to me when you have a full edit and you know you may have been in different environments like i'll pull up some different clips here in a minute those allow you to glue everything together and stuff just kind of feels cohesive at that point and that's why i like these finishing grades on an adjustment layer that affect every clip and that way it just kind of glues things together so it's kind of a nice way to do that um you could also go with crispy crispy again is more of a natural look but what this is going to do add a little bit of contrast add some magenta um you can see there it kind of takes some of the green out so if you wanted more of like a uh, a punchier image that's a way to do that um you could also go with let's see finishing let's we'll go orange and bay this is like a michael bay rip um 
because he's an orange and teal man. This one's kind of heavy handed too, um, but this is your classic blue teal kind of look. It obviously crushes the blacks a little bit here. Not a huge fan of that. So what I would probably do would be back that up just about like that. And then there you go. You get your you get your your look. And and again, this is I kind of like this uh, honestly on this this particular shot. It looks good with the orange kind of mortar in between these stones here and the greens. It makes it look nice. Um, and then the last one I have is warm and warm browns. And basically this one is kind of as as, as advertised. This is the um, a finishing LUT that I used on the recent uh, woodworking film I made um, that was baked on top of everything there. Um, I think it looks great. It, it really did exactly what I needed to do for that film. And this is, I also used this finishing LUT on um, the film Just Go that's on the YouTube channel that I actually made with Nemo here. This is my friend Nemo, by the way. Shout out Nemo for always being in my videos and letting me use him as a guinea pig. He's the best, he's dope. Um, love this dude, but uh, made that with him and we use this, this, I use this finishing LUT as well. And you guys, like a lot of you mentioned that on the warm it up. So um, it's just a cool look and it does really, I like what it does with the greens. If you kind of want to mute your greens a little bit, have them more subtle, more earthy looking. Um, it's a great look. You know, if you had multiple clips in here, like let's just say here, we'll drag these other two from the same session in. Select these two clips and then paste attributes, which is uh, shift command V, by the way, if you don't know, it's a great way to uh, quickly do stuff. And then you could choose what attributes you wanted to paste. If I just pasted the adjustments we already made on these, all these clips, right? And see how well they're matched in terms of how I expose in the moment, I could have missed exposure, right? This one looks pretty good. But then this one, I can tell it's gonna be dark. This, this last one. Yeah, see this one, this one I just underexposed a little bit. So these are where those case by case adjustments come in and you wanna uh, make sure that you can kind of adjust these looks. So what we'll do is we'll come here and pick a good frame that we like. And then so for this one, I might not crush the mid-tones as much and I may boost the highlights a bit, um, then maybe bring the mid-tones back down just, to, just a little bit. And then now, it kind of matches exposure levels from everything. So you just gotta kind of watch your stuff. That's why I said these are not just drag and drop LUTs um, that you just drop on. They get you really close, as you can see. And then the cool thing about this, and these are just test clips, so they're a little out of focus, but um, the cool thing about this is now, if you really wanted to, you could come in with something like Dehancer, right? And do some film emulation on top of all of this and put that on your adjustment layers. And so now is where you could do some film emulation. So I, dr I drug it on, this is like the default setting. It's a bit much, um, as you can see, I'm not a fan. So what I'll do is I'll come in here, go into Dehancer. And what I like, this is just me, um, in terms of the profile, the film profile, I think it's the Fuji Color Natura 1600 is my favorite. Um, and then what I would come in and do uh, where it says, let's see, where is it? Um, on the grain, I believe, yeah. If you come on here and go to custom, this allows you to then kind of adjust the amount of grain and the size and all the details like that. And as you can see, Dehancer is kind of sucking some of the saturation out of our image um, and kind of crushing the blacks a little bit too much. Um, and there's different things you can do within Dehancer to kind of like tweak that and, and, and you know, adjust how much it's affecting. So, uh, because I usually like my grade good enough. Like I don't use Dehancer as a full color grade. I use it as like a finishing touch. So a lot of times if you just use linear, it affects your base image less. Um, and so that's kind of what I like to do there. As you can see, Dehancer does not like playing in real time in full, full quality, but this is actually the look I went for for the R6 kind of when you review a lot of this, these clips that you guys saw from that video, these were graded. I used Dehancer on them. Um, and so, but for this one, honestly, in hindsight, I kind of just like it clean, but I just, just wanted to play with some film emulations, but like that just shows you what you're capable of. And, um, and it's amazing the quality of this Canon R6 Mark II and this C-Log3 footage. Um, I think it kind of gets slept on a little bit. So that's my process. That's how I grade my C-Log3 footage. And as you can see, it's not just drag and drop on the LUTs, but the LUTs do get you to a finished product way faster. And I find them extremely useful. So hopefully you will too. If you're interested in those, they are in the description, the links are. And like I said, they're 20% off on the C-Log3 and C-Log2 LUT pack. And then I have the new finishing LUT pack. That's just 10 bucks. So if you want to start there and be able to push in a certain direction, that's a great place to start. But yeah, that's how my process works. It works the same for the C70 footage on the C-Log2 LUTs, same concept, but that shows that you always have to make sure you make adjustments and kind of go clip by clip to make sure that you're getting the consistent look across all of your footage that you want and you want your film to feel cohesive. And I'm not perfect at this, I'm still learning. So this is me working with you guys as I learn. But so far, this has been my favorite way to do so. And I think it's really effective and it's been working well for me for the last year. So hopefully it will help you as well. But as always, thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate you. I'll catch you in the next one.